Automations and AI processes are getting more and more important to businesses every single day. NA10 pretty much has been the market leader for the last while, but there is a new kid on the block that makes it a whole lot easier to set up automations, to integrate AI into your business and provide real world results for businesses. Could this new tool be the future? Let's take a look at it. Okay, so this is lindy.ai and what it's meant for is building AI agents very quick and simply, essentially AI automations within your business. As you can see, it can automate outreach, it can automate phone calls, it can automate a whole lot of things that it will tell you here on its website if you go and have a look at it. Um, and it's got a load of great templates which you can use. And the pricing has a free model which is quite limited. However, uh, we'll come and look at the pricing a little bit later. So um, once you've signed up for a free account, you can sign in and the first thing that you'll see is there are a load of templates which you can use and start using right now really quickly and start deploying. As you can see here, they've got web researcher, they've got a lead generator, sales meeting recorder, they've got sales call prep, which is great. I know lots of people use this. Um, lead outreacher, we can see here case study drafter. You know, this list goes on and on and on of really, really powerful and interesting things which you can click into. Let's, uh, let's pick one, let's go um, lead outreacher. Let's click on this and go add and let's have a look. Okay, so to run this, we will need to authorize our account, our Google account, that's fine. I will quickly do this. And Lindy makes all of this very, very quick and easy. Comparing this to N8M where you have to go through Google's OAuth 2, this is much nicer. So we'll skip the Slack, I don't need that, but just have a look at what this process looks like. Uh, if we come here to the flow editor, you can see here that just by using this template, we've got like a pre-built flow, which looks like um, either when a new row is added, I imagine this is to a Google Sheet where you have all your leads, or it looks like you can chat with it via message. It's gonna send the first email, uh, which it looks like it's going to gen use AI to generate the content. And it's then gonna wait some days and send a second one. If it doesn't get a response, then wait another couple of days, send a third one, uh, and then cancel and update via Slack um, if there's still no response, or if there is a response, update via Slack. So you can see here, it's got a load of really powerful templates that you can use right off the bat. However, let's go and create our own one from scratch. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create one. Uh, yep, yeah, that's fine. I'm gonna create an automation which I've already created in NA10, and this is gonna allow me to compare the two really well. So what I'm gonna do here is create an automation or an AI agent where I can handle all of my to-do items which are in Notion. So here I am within this new flow. My trigger that I'm gonna select is chat with this Lindy. So this is gonna be a, essentially a chat interface within Lindy on the Lindy platform. And I'm then gonna have an AI agent. So in the prompt for the AI agent, I'm gonna say, you are a helpful assistant that can interact with my Notion to-do list to help me organize my tasks. Okay, great. We're going to leave the model as Claude 3.5 Sonnet. That's fine. One thing about Lindy is that you do not pay for the AI tokens out of your pocket. You are paying for those through your uh, Lindy fees, essentially. So again, we'll come back and look at the pricing in a minute, but within this price or this price, you are paying for credits, which don't exactly equal um, AI tokens, but it's more or less. It's more or less the same. So coming back over here, that model's fine. And the skills is where we're going to add uh, what are essentially our tools, which allow us to interact with whatever we want to interact with. So if I go on skills and go on Notion, find my Notion, and you can see here, if I get rid of, sorry, if I go back and have a look at all of the skills, you can see here, we can connect with a load of different things, you know, just a massive list of integrations. And all of these integrations are really, really nicely set up on NA10. It's a bit of a pain to set things up, such as um, Google and Google's OAuth, you know, just a pain. However, these are much, much easier. Same with Notion, actually. Let's have a look at that. So if we go Notion, um, and you can see some of these are premium. So you do have to pay for a premium account in order to use some of these premium actions. However, most of them aren't. So we're gonna go uh, create database item. We want that one. We're gonna go back into Notion and we're going to uh, find database items. Let's add another one and go um, find database item. So we've got items and item. We're gonna add another one, which is going to be um, update database item. So that should, uh, and then let's remove this. That should be all of the tasks that we need in order to speak to um, our Notion board. So before I give it a run, let's have a look at settings. So these settings, yep, let's save that. So these settings relate to the entire flow and they are instructions on how to use this Lindy. There's then context, so you can give context to the entire workflow. So rather than just being able to give context to this one agent here, you can give context to the entire workflow, which can really help to give everything a lot of cohesion. So it all works a little bit better and all of the different agents you may use or the different uh, modules 
know how to speak to each other. We then have memories, which is really great if you want to, you know, for instance, say my working hours are between nine and six. Or if you want to say my business does this, we offer these services, this is our business model, this is how we charge clients, etc. And then you can also uh, select the default model. However, let's uh, go back over to tasks and let's see if we can give it a run. I have not set up any um, integrations with Notion, so I imagine that's not going to work, but let's see. Let's say what is on my to-do list. So I imagine it's not going to be able to get anything because we haven't set up that connection. So there we go. It's asking us to connect Notion and it's got a really nice interface. Let's close that and say connect Notion. So it's then going to bring us to Notion and we're going to quite easily be able to select which pages we want to give it access to. So yep, that's fine. So I've scrolled through all my pages and I found the one that I want to give it access to and I'm going to simply click allow access. And you'll see this is much, much simpler than how we would do it in NA10. So it's now gonna go off and do it. And you can see here, it tells you how many credits it's using. So it's used 1.5. Um, and you can see down here, this comes away from our total. And you can see here that it has given us a summary of our jobs to do. And if we have a look at Notion itself, you can see these are correct. Those are the correct jobs here. Great, so we can go back over to here and say, okay, can you add a work task for me saying to, invoice Jeff. Click go. It's going to spend a little bit of time thinking about it. I'll help you add a new work task for invoicing Jeff. I'll add the task. I'll add the task to invoice Jeff as a work task. Since it's related to finances, I'll set it as high priority and it's created that database item. It's very chatty, as you can see. Um, if we go back over to here, we can then see that invoice Jeff has been given this priority and we can now say um, add the due date of let's say uh, 3rd of May and send that off. And I'll update the invoice Jeff task to add a due date of the 3rd of May, 2025. And if we go back over, um, it hasn't done it yet. Let's see if it's just taking a second. So there we go, it's just doing it. Uh, I've updated it and if we go back over, there we go, it's now got that deadline. So if you do work with NA10, you will see that it's much, much easier to get an automation up and running like this than it is with NA10. This is super quick, super easy, and it's got a really nice user interface. And one really great thing is that if you are a business, you can simply create all of these automations, all of these agents, and you can come in and you can chat with these agents, you can create different tasks, so you have different conversations, and you have them all in one place. That's one thing I really love about Lindy. Okay, let's create another automation, another agent, and this time it's another very highly used one, which is a calendar manager. So if we go new Lindy, and then we are going to start from scratch. I'm sure they've got one, but I'm just gonna start from scratch just to see what it's like. And my trigger, again, is going to be chat. However, you can see we could use any of these. Um, yep, we're gonna go chat. I'm going to go agent again. You don't have to go agent. You can create um, simply logic-based processes like you would with Make or Zapier or NA10. However, I'm going to use an agent because that's you know essentially what the interesting part is. The rest of it is basically the same. It does have good integration with knowledge bases as well. However, let's just have a look at this. So the prompt, this one is going to be, you are, are a helpful assistant that can help manage my calendar. The skills that we're going to give it are Google Calendar. And let's see. Okay, so we are going to add um, check availability. Let's add that one. Let's go back to calendar. I wish they would make it so you don't have to type it in every time. Let's go create event. Um, I'm not sure we need anything else. Let's have a look. Okay, let's go delete event. And I'll add another one and we'll go get event details. And as you can see, there are some again, which are premium. Um, we'll go get event details. There we go. And there we go. We are going to turn this on and we are going to go back over to tasks. And I'm not sure whether we need to set up uh, authentication because we already have signed in with the same Google account, but let's say, um, what events do I have on today? Now, if I have a look at my calendar, I have nothing on today. So let's see what it says. Okay, so we need to connect it, so that's fine. Let me connect it here. Again, this is much, much simpler than when you do it with NA10. So we'll go continue, we'll give it access. And that is as simple as it gets. So there we go, based on your calendar, it looks like you have no events scheduled for today. Fantastic. So let's say, um, please can you put in my calendar that I have a paddle match at 6 p.m. today. Oops, misspelled today, but hopefully AI is clever enough to deal with that. 
Okay, so it looks like I need to connect it again. So let's go through and do this. Looks like I have to re-authenticate it every single time I want to do a different thing, but uh, hopefully that's just a one-off. There we go, it's added a paddle match. And if I go over to my calendar, we can see I've now got a paddle match at six o'clock. I can then go in and I can say something like, um, please edit it so that it lasts uh, 90 minutes. And we'll send it off to do that. Okay, it's deleted that event and created a new event. I wonder if I gave it access to edit events. Um, I didn't, okay, I didn't give it access to edit events. So the way that it's dealt with that is deleting it and adding a new one, which I suppose does work. And there we go, that paddle match is now six to 7.30, although uh, we did delete it and add it back. The better way to do that is just editing it. So let's see if we can go into the flow and if we can go calendar and let's see if edit um, is in there. Update event, there we go, that's what we need. Great, so if I go back over and I save this, go to tasks and I say, uh, actually move this to tomorrow. Now, hopefully it's not gonna delete it, it's just gonna update it. There we go, it's gonna update it, perfect. So let's have a look and it's not today, it is tomorrow. So there you can see, again, really, really quick and easy to create these simple automations within Lindy, much, much simpler than with NA10. However, you can see that we do not have anywhere near as much versatility in what we can create. We've got this prompt here, and we also have the prompt in settings, uh, or the context in settings. However, you can't really play with it as much as you can with NA10. And you'll also be able to see that we are using our credits down here. And even though we are not paying for AI credits, because that's essentially what our credits are, um, we still have a limit and they're still being counted towards that credit limit. And when you take into account the pricing, you're actually paying quite a lot for these credits for the, what they actually are. So the lowest monthly cost is $50. And if you compare that to NA10, where you can self-host it for $7 a month, and then you can pay, you know, five, maybe maybe five, $10 a month in terms of AI credits, it's really been much cheaper to do it via NA10. However, you do get this nice interface and the nice builder in Lindy, not as much detail, can't build uh, complex agents as well as you can in NA10. However, for a lot of businesses that are simply looking to get started and to use some of their templates, because a lot of these templates will just work off the bat, then I see it as a really, really good tool if you're running a business that wants to get using AI straight away. So let's look at one of these templates here. And one that I've been playing around with is the lead generator, because this is something that a lot of businesses uh, struggle with or is a limitation within their business is getting lots of high quality leads. So let's continue, um, continue. And here we go, this is pre-built. And you can say it's going to search using company background, title, location, industry, skills, team size. And here we go, heads up, each lead is gonna cost 40 credits. So three leads will be 120 credits. Now, when you work that out through here, then this is relatively expensive compared to what it's actually doing. And you could create something much cheaper with NA10 and your own integrations and building it yourself. But let's see. So here it has given us some suggestions. Let's say three people who are in charge of hiring at AI companies based in Europe. And let's see what it gets from that. So it's going off and doing its thing, searching for people. So it's come back, it's taken about 30 seconds or so. And yes, it has used a whole bunch of credits as it said it would. And let's see what it's given me. So um, it has given me people based in Europe. It has given me people in charge of hiring. However, I'm not sure what this company is. It doesn't sound very AI related. No, this is um, hair wellness, okay. This is media and entertainment and air products and chemicals. And I imagine that's chemicals. So it has not given me what I asked for here. So let's update it and say, please make sure the industry is AI related. And uh, let's go and let's give it a little bit more time and see what it comes back with. Okay, so it's taken about another 20, 30 seconds and it's come back saying, sorry, I cannot find that. Um, it's not working well with whatever this API here is. I'm not sure what that is, um, but it's taken my credits. So we've pretty much run out of credits and it said, sorry, I can't do it. So here we can see an example of uh, Lindy definitely running up against some constraints. It perhaps not being quite as clever as it wants it to be. Now. You could probably go in and uh, edit the flow. Let's have a look at the flow and see what it's doing. Uh, so what is it using? Uh, people data labs. 
that's where it's finding the information. You can maybe edit this to uh, make it more smart. However, it's not doing what it said on the tin and it is being quite expensive. So our 400 credits is about four US dollars and we basically use nothing on the Notion and the Google uh, Calendar side of things. So just to create those three leads, it's eaten about 300, about 300 credits. So that's about $3 for three leads. Very expensive, does not work at scale. So you can see that this lead generation one just doesn't work. It's not economical for the vast majority of companies. And this pretty much sums up Lindy compared to uh, NA10. Lindy is really easy to use. It's got a really nice user interface. You can see all of your uh, agents that you build. You can see all of the different conversations. You can chat with it very nicely. The flow editor is nice and easy to use too. One of the biggest pluses for me is that it integrates really well with loads and loads of different tools. So you can see with Notion, super easy. With Google, super easy. And I'm sure all of the other triggers that we could connect to as well are also very simple to connect, which is great and makes it really, really simple. And it's got a great number of templates and automations that are pre-built that you can just drag and drop and play with straight away. However, as we can see here, not all of them are really fit for use. You know, this doesn't really work as a lead generator because it's not giving me uh, the leads that I want and it's very, very expensive. So I am still gonna be using NA10 for all of the automations, all of the AI stuff that I do, simply because I am a little bit more tech savvy. So I like being able to control everything like you can in NA10. However, here, uh, not so much. Um, I can actually make sure that when I generate leads, the right leads are being generated and it's going to be much, much cheaper than using lindy.ai. However, lindy is looking really promising. If they can solve a few of the issues that we've seen here, then I think in a couple of months time, this could be really promising. And I think also for companies that want to start using this, they don't have someone in-house who is uh, particularly tech savvy and is on the tech side of things. This can be a really great way to start using some of these um, templates, some of these basic automations. I've used used the um, sales meeting recorder before. That's actually really good from Lindy. Um, I've used some of these other ones as well. So there are some really good parts to it. However, if you're really, really keen about building automations, being able to tweak it so it's just right for your use case, then uh, Lindy still got a little bit of a way to go, but it's a very interesting tool that I would recommend keeping an eye upon. If you do want to stay up to date with everything to do with AI, everything to do with the latest tools and the tools which can help you the most within your business, then do come on over to the Applied AI Club, which is my little community where I help you guys out, speak to you guys about what's going on in the world of AI and especially how that relates to a business and uh, applying AI to your business to make the business more efficient and more profitable. If you have liked this video, then please do give this video a like down below. That really helps out. If you've got any questions, then do comment them below or hop into the community and we can have a chat there. And if you do want to see more videos like this, please do subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.